Well, hello again. Uh, this is an attempt to show you um, or, or to analyze this clip from Schindler's List as an example of how semiotic analysis works in film. Uh, so I'm going to be playing the video and then pausing it a certain part and just try to, to apply some of the concepts and some of the ideas that I explained to you in my previous video um, on how to um, analyze semiotically a film or, or a film clip. Okay, here we see Schindler as he observes what's going on in this Jewish ghetto, you know, and how um, people are chased around pretty much. So we see this opposition between two types of shots, you know, the, the shot of the character as he looks on and then the shot of what he's looking at. So it's a very, it's a reverse, this is called a reverse shot. And it's very important, very common, but very important in order to establish um, what the character is doing. And so we can see through the character's eyes. Very important at this point is color because everything is in black and white, except for this, the, the coat that this little girl is wearing. That's a metaphor. Okay, obviously, if everything's black and white and there's this red spot right there, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor of, it could be a metaphor for different things, but it's a metaphor of suffering. It's a metaphor of life that is being, that is being taken away from, this, from these people. And the girl symbolizes that, you know, the girl symbolizes um, striving to survive uh, but all around her, there's death and there's blood. But the only color we get is that. Also, something that I want you to notice here is the music, right? A children's choir singing in the background. Uh, the tones of the music, even though we don't understand what they're singing, establish a contrast between what's what is going on. There's all this violence going around. There's shooting, there's screaming. There are people dying. And there's just a little girl wearing a red coat and there's the children's choir singing in the back. And so of course, the impact is enormous, right? This scene tries to communicate mainly, the main purpose is to communicate with Schindler is experiencing. Remember, if, you, if I don't know if you've seen the movie or not, but Schindler um, was a German businessman who hires Jews, and uh, he tries against all odds to protect these Jews from the Nazi uh, government and from the uh, from the death that they're facing um, during the Holocaust. So Schindler at this point is realizing what's going on really, you know, he didn't know uh, all of this was happening. And at this point he's realizing that. Um, okay, so let me keep going. The acting, of course, the, the facial expressions. And of course this perspective, right? This is terrible, this is terrible. This is people dying, people being shot. And uh, his acting and the other actresses' performance also communicate. Um, okay, notice here, sorry, to finish my previous idea, the, their acting communicates uh, this lack of belief, like this is not happening, this is not real. I mean, maybe I heard about this, but I, I, I didn't believe it until I saw it. Um, and that's what they're seeing. Um, the camera, guides our vision here it zooms in a little so we see we can actually see the faces of people but we see the background and the background is always this little girl wearing a red coat and that's what that's what Schindler is um, following you know he follows this little girl um, he's desperate to save her even though he's not doing anything physically but with his sight by following her, he's trying to save her. He's following her. Like, where is she going? Is she going to be safe? Is she going to escape? 
Uh, nobody is, is after her, nobody notices her, but I notice her. She's the only one wearing a red coat. Of course, in reality, there would be a lot of colors that Schindler is looking at, but the fact that she's the only one wearing color just points her out. And that's, and, and that's him, that's Schindler following her and following her story, right? All of these elements, the music, the color, the use of color or lack of color, the performances, um, the use of the camera and the movement of the camera, the sound, the, the, you know, the shots, the rifles being shot, also the, the mise en scène, which is what we put, mise en scène is what is placed in front of the camera, whatever is within the frame is a mise en scène. Like in this case, for example, we see a room that is destroyed. Uh, people used to live there, but there's a mess, you know, there's a, uh, uh, what is what used to be a bed, but not anymore. There's a suitcase that is, um, someone was putting things in the suitcase, but then they had to run away, it's empty. Um, there is a cushion that is ripped open. There are there's furniture that is, you know, toppled over. All of this, all everything that is inside the frame that we can look at and communicates a message of the of of violence, you know, of loss, of uh, of war. All of that within the frame of this little room. That's um, also ways in which encodes in which, or that the film uses to communicate a message. And here, see, the coat loses its color, right? She just goes to hide like everybody else. She doesn't stand out anymore. So hopefully, this uh, will clarify and, and, and will give you an idea of how semiotic analysis works. Every detail, every aspect that can be used to communicate meaning will be used to communicate meaning. And, uh, and uh, hopefully this presentation will give you some idea of how those codes are employed and interpreted just to know what's going on and to experience um, what's going on and what the characters are experiencing and also the emotions that as viewers we can we can have, right? Okay, so I hope you have questions for when we meet um, synchronously and uh, I'll be ready to help you and answer them as best I can. Bye-bye.